Good morning, everybody, and a freilich and lagba Eimer. What a great schos to learn chassidus on the day of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai's Lula. So here we are with our Maimer, Lacey Mishakela, full devotion. We are like rocking this Mimer out. I've had so many people message me that they've watched the recordings or they watched the video live and they are loving it. So Baruch Hashem. Also, it's funny, yesterday I got a comment saying that it's so practical, that the, one of the reasons why they enjoyed it because it's so practical. And I got to say, the first time I learned this Mimer, I had a hard time, which means that that comment means that the Shir is doing what it's meant to be doing. So thank you so much to whoever, to the person who sent that comment. And also, Baruch Hashem, thank you for joining us in making this a practical um, experience. So, I, tonight, Mirz Hashem, I'm going to be looking to see what Mimer we're going to do next. I had, I had some suggestions, so I'm going to try and see if they fit um, what we're trying to, you know, the goal we're trying to get to. But I am going to try to give everybody a heads up of what's our next mimer so that you can get a copy hopefully they're in stock okay so we are on page and today i'm going to be using this version we are on page 68 <clears throat> yesterday we yesterday we spoke about right so as i said for the bajillionth time but a mimer starts with psukim or a question then we have to go through a whole level of understanding things. And then we look at that same question or the same pasuk from a new perspective and we see the clarity that it has brought out in us. So, so yesterday and these next few classes, we're going to be in the closing stage of the Mimer, which means we're going to be going back into the pasuk, reanalyzing it and saying, okay, well, how can we see this now? So yesterday we analyzed this aspect that um, the Pasuk, which says the number of your days I will fill, I, meaning, means the essence of Hashem, meaning the the third person narrator who who tells us what are the conversations that happen between the level of Havaya, so to speak, and the level, and, and Maishu Rabbeinu, or us, right? So that essence, the deepest, deepest, deepest essence of Hashem, that part of him, she can't even say part because it's so deep, but like that, you know, him, um, that part comes and fills our days. So the fact is that we may not always have done every single thing perfectly, and we may not always have kept every single thing perfectly. And it's possible not just have we wasted our time, but we've also made decisions that were against our greater purpose and goal. And Hashem gives us this beauty, this incredible, like, bracha, that he says, even the time you wasted before you knew what was right, even the time you wasted even after you knew what was right, all of your mistakes, as long as you try and you put your effort and you, 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 know, you do all the parts and you work towards doing the parts that we spoke about in you know, the previous sections of the Mimer, as long as you do that, I will take those minutes that you wasted. I will take the moments that you wasted. I'll take the, the hours or the days that were wasted and I will fill them. I will fill them with goodness. I will fill them with bracha. I will, I will not only fill them, but I'll make them shine. I'll make it as if it's the greatest day of your life. And that's huge. That is huge. That the essence of Hashem is willing to come and, and, and fill our days, even the ones wasted. So we just need to do our part. We need to make an attempt to be open, an open keli for whatever Hashem needs of me right now whether that means focusing on shidduchim, whether that means focusing on being a mother, whether that means focusing on your marriage, whether that means focusing on your work, whatever you're expected to do at that point in time, be an open keli. Say, whatever Hashem wants from me, I will do. I am a soldier, I am a servant of Hashem, and I'm going to be open to doing it. Not only that, but being open is the first step. It's opening up the womb, right? The next step is to bring in the seed, so to speak. And that seed means to actually do those things. Fill that time with what you are meant to be doing, right? So many times you get this beautiful inspiration. Oh, wow, I should really like go daven because I have so much time. And then the Yetzirah comes and like, you know, pick up your phone or you pick up this other thing and then you get distracted. And like 17 million hours later, it's like, oh, shoot, I missed that opportunity, right? So the next step is to actually do those things. And if we do those things with the blessing of Hashem, 
We'll be able to have a, a feeling of inspiration. We'll be able to have a feeling of love and appreciation and awe and respect for Hashem. And by doing this whole process, which we learned and we discussed in, throughout our mimer, Hashem will say, okay, even the days that you didn't do it perfectly, I will come and I will fill them. And not just I, the level of Havaya, means I, the essence of God, the real, true, deepest part of Hashem, that's the part that's going to come and do with us for us. And it's just, it, it's the most beautiful message. So we just need to put, you know, give a finger and Hashem gives us an arm. So let's keep going. Okay. Now we have, we're on page 68. We have, we're on almost the last section according to this split up. So we're going to start, okay? Eradicating disease, right? Because another part of the Pasuk said, and I will remove illness from your midst, okay? So now let's analyze that. This is also the meaning of the Pasuk, and I will remove illness from your midst, which is written in the first person. In other words, the narrator from the Torah, the narrator of the Torah, the essence of God. And I think I've said this a million times, but just in case anybody's missed it, please take a moment to, if you aren't looking at the screen, please look at the screen right now. The essence of Hashem, which was here even before any of us came down, even before he created, before God created a cedar, a progression of creation, that essence of Hashem is the one that will remove the illness. That essence of Hashem is the third person narrator who is telling us what's happening in the Torah. Okay? So I, whenever it's a first person, means that narrator. Okay? So the essence of Hashem, uh, the narrator of the Torah, is speaking. The illness regarding which the Pasuk states, I will remove illness, refers to the disease that remains in existence even after you serve the Lord your God and after he blesses your bread and your water. Your bread and your water refers to the written and oral parts of Torah, respectively. Alternatively, they refer to Torah and mitzvahs, regarding which the Pasuk states, he shall bless your bread and your water, that even the service of Hashem through performing Torah and mitzvahs are dependent upon the blessings that emanate from the name of Havaya. Even at such a state, in other words, in the level of God's name of Havaya, there is still a possibility for disease. There is therefore a need for an I will remove illness, specifically by way of the narrator of the Torah, Asma Summa Hossein Soif. Okay? So one second, let's take a moment to analyze this. What does this mean? It means that, that even though we try our best, there might be an illness that still holds us back, right? As we said, there's, you know, there might be different, different options as to why, you know, why we don't, we're not feeling it, so to speak. And the, the fact is that in the level of Seder Ishtalshus, right, in the letter, level of the slow, not slow, the step-by-step -step progression, oops, progression of levels of Seder Ishtalshus, there could be, right, as we said way, way, way in the beginning of chapter three, a nice um, gimel, that there could be a level here where what we did wrong affects the whole Seder Stalshus, right? So if by us not creating a Kaylee, by us not creating a Kaylee, it means kind of, I, the example I used then was the bottling, the wine bottling company, right? By us breaking, chas v'shalom, us breaking a, a, a wine bottle, it means it totally affects all the way it levels up that the point is that at the end, we might have to tell the, you know, the, the person who's growing the, the grapes, by the way, we're slowing down per, uh, process because there's all these bottles that are broken. So we, it, it, it does affect the progression of steps all the way up till, you know, the person growing the, the, the grapes, let's say. So, so to here, there could be a disease because at this point, things are still affected right? So there could be a disease. And so therefore, being that at this point in the level of Havaya, the level of several Ishtalshus, there is a possibility for disease. The essence of Hashem needs to come down and remove that illness. A good example for this, which I think is very appropriate in what we're talking about now, and what we're living with now, is that in a certain sense, it's much easier to prevent ourselves from getting sick than it is once a person is sick you know, with whatever illness that they have and then getting rid of that illness, okay? So regardless of the politics about whether opening up or not opening up, assuming that we all, you know, are on the same, that's already a hard thing to say, but um, 
with the current situation, it's much easier to stay home, so to speak, and hold back from doing all these things and hopefully through that preventing ourselves from being exposed to illness and therefore not getting sick, then somebody who is sick for the doctors to give whatever medicine or whatever treatments in order to remove that illness, right? So that's why it's much, if, if a person, okay, okay, hold, hold that thought because we're going to discuss it in the mind, okay? Root of all disease. Okay, so the name, the I, the essence, the asmus, the most safe has to come down and remove that disease. So now we have to understand what's the root of all disease. The illness that the Pasuk refers to is unqualified illness without specific description. Referring to the root of all illness, the concept of self-consciousness that is a result of the sin of the tree of knowledge. Which, by the way, we're going to understand. Okay. Before the sin of knowledge... There were no feelings of self-consciousness, as the Pasuk states, and they were both unclothed, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. The sin introduced self-consciousness, as the Pasuk states, and the woman saw that the tree was good for food. This is why, even after you serve the Lord your God, and he blesses your bread and your water, there could still be, and there still is, illness. The sin of the tree of knowledge had an effect on everyone even the righteous and even the completely righteous, as our sages state, for God died through the serpent's machinations. Interesting wording. I think the other one translated it differently. Referring to the greatest and most righteous men who died only because of the sin of the tree of knowledge. Okay, so let's take a moment to understand that. What does that mean? I think yesterday in our, in our, in our Ferengen with Rachel, whoever hasn't seen that, I hope it's going to be up on our YouTube soon because it was amazing. But one of the topics that she discussed was this concept of our stories that we tell ourselves. And that level of, it is a certain level of what came into our lives through the sin of the tree of knowledge. Because once they ate, once Adam and Chava ate from the tree of knowledge, they became self-aware. And self-aware isn't always a beautiful thing. As we know that many times we tell ourselves nasty things. Many times we label ourselves with really not good things. And the fact is that when we walk around carrying labels, we're actually hurting ourselves more than when we are able to clear ourselves from those labels and say, I am here to do what I'm meant to do, right? That's one of the reasons why, for example, I'm not saying it's a good example, but it is an example. In the army, the, the, the beginning of training is basically breaking the person down to the point that the person doesn't even know what they're capable of and not capable of. I mean, I was just speaking to, uh, not just, what is this? Three months ago, when we had our last guests before this whole craziness, so they, we had guests for Shabbos, and they were saying that one of the guests, he, had, he, had, he went to the army for a bit, and he said they would wake them up at four in the morning to iron their shirts, and then wake them up again at six in the morning to write an essay. And then like they wouldn't sleep and they would have to do all these insane things because they realized what you think you're capable of is nothing in compared to what you're actually capable of. And so therefore we have to get rid of your personal inhibitions. We have to get rid of your personal labels, your personal self-consciousness so that you can actually know how much more you're capable of. So this level of, of eating from the tree of knowledge brought us this concept of, of being self-aware in a not good way. I mean, I'm sure some people could work towards being self-aware in a good way, but in reality, our goal is to be servant of Hashem, to be one with Hashem. And Hashem is not self-aware of his, you know, Hashem is the greatest of the great. It's infinite. So if we're able to connect to that infinite side of us, which is one of the things Racheli spoke about yesterday, that Sometimes we need to dream bigger than what we think we're capable of. And just that dream push us out of what we have labeled ourselves. So this is the illness. This is the illness we're talking about. This concept of being so self-aware, what I can't do, what I can do. And it's a shame because there are certain mentalities in our modern day society. And, and sometimes, you know, for example, there's amazing types of therapy that take us out of that. But there's also, you know, just like anything in life, there's uh, pros and cons. And there are also certain therapies or certain, you know, therapists that by the end of therapy, we come out in a box and we say, these are the things I can do and these are the things I can't do. And again, having boundaries is a wonderful thing. Don't get me wrong. Having proper communication is a wonderful thing. 
but just realize that sometimes it can come from a place of um, now I'm square. And this is the mimer that's, this is what the mimer is trying to tell us. We have to break out of that. We have to live a life that is a little bit more unlimited and not so self, you know, stuck. Okay. He who loves, hence, let me just, beautiful. Hence, even the completely righteous are subject to self-consciousness. As is known, even a completely righteous person who serves Hashem out of awe and love in delight is not completely selfless, but remains a distinct entity who is in awe of God and he loves him. There is an entity who loves. Okay, so for example, and this is one of the struggles of, of this illness that happens, that even someone who's completely righteous, even the Rebbe, to use a, an example, right? So the Rebbe, the Rebbe's level of love and awe for the Abister is beyond what we could ever comprehend. But no matter how hard the Rebbe tried, the, the fact that Adam and Chava ate from the tree and the fact that we live in a world that we feel our own existence means that even the Rebbe's deep, deep love for Hashem, it was the Rebbe's deep love for Hashem. He never, I, I can't say never, but assuming according to this mimer, even someone in such a holy state can't fully lose themselves and feel nothingness, so to speak. Nothingness, not in a negative way. Again, it means a, a connection to something greater than yourself. It doesn't mean like, ooh, nothing. But if we have this level, you know, you know, it's kind of like a, a person that they get told, you know, let's say, let's say a lot of people say, oh, I can't wake up so early. I'm not a morning person, right? But let's say somebody comes and tells you, you know, I bought you a ticket to Hawaii. I mean, this is pre-corona. I bought you a ticket to Hawaii. Wake up at two in the morning so you can be at the airport on time. You're up at two in the morning. Some people might even, they're so excited. They might even like be up at, you know, 1.30 because like they beat the alarm because of their excitement, right? So, so when you're connected to something greater than yourself and you're like, wow, this is amazing. We can go beyond our limitations. So that's what I mean by, by, by not feeling ourselves in that sense, okay? So he does not attain the level, he does not attain the level of cleaving to Hashem, which was the level of his soul before it descended to the world below. Certainly, and to an even greater degree, Bainanim, literally at the average people, I mean, our level of Bainani, I missed what was typed one second. Um, and those in an even lower caliber are self-conscious. Fact is, we tell ourselves stories, we hold ourselves back, we are, we're too, we're scared of what people think of us, we're scared of what we think of ourselves, we're scared of our past, we're scared of the possibility of our future, and that's what we need to get rid of. We need to realize, and that's Recheli like hit the nail on the head last night when she spoke about it, you have to realize you're Recheli Kala Kama And when you, when, you, when you connect yourself to that infiniteness, to that greatness, you can realize you're beyond your own limitations, you're beyond your own self-consciousness. A person cannot heal the disease of self-consciousness on his own, but only through eliciting the highest degree of godliness. Regarding this, the Pasuk specifically states, and I, the essence, that highest, highest possible level of Hashem, will remove that person, will remove, not person in the Havdil, but that, that level of Hashem will remove. In the first person, referring to the to the, the deepest, most essential part of Hashem, blessed be He, as mentioned earlier. Wow. Oh my gosh. Surprisingly, I think we're actually going to finish the Mimer today. All right. Let's do this. Okay. Materialized blessing. And it actually explains that usually a Mimer ends with a little bit more, but being that the Rebbe was at this point in a certain sense, they're, they're basically, I think from the other book, it's one of the footnotes that explains that some of the parts might be missing because of um, the Rebbe's state in which he was speaking and it was hard to hear. Okay. Everything mentioned above will also become manifest in the physical. So remember we said, you know, there shouldn't be a barren woman. There shouldn't be miscarriage. There should, Hashem should bless your bread and your water. All of these blessings. Hashem will fill your days. All of these things. Not only are the spiritual sense, you know, all the things that we analyzed and we discussed, but... It's actually in a physical as well. As long as we do our part, we try our best, Hashem will bless us in these physical things as well. 
everything mentioned above will also become manifest in the physical. There will be abundant livelihood concerning that which the Pasuk says, and he shall bless your bread and your water. Health concerning that which the Pasuk says, and I will remove illness from your midst. And furthermore, the number of your days I will fill. And children concerning which the, state, the Pasuk states, none shall miscarry or be barren in your land. All of this in preparation for entering the land, the, the, the Eretz Israel, the land of Israel, regarding which the subject, the subsequent verse in the, in the Torah says, so shall it be for us speedily in our days with the coming of the righteous Mashiach. Okay? So first of all, Mazel Tov, I'm very surprised. I thought for sure we weren't going to finish today and I was going to give more time, but Baruch Hashem, we covered a lot of ground. So let's, let's recap for a minute. What does this mean? It means that Hashem will, will eradicate the source of all disease. What's the source of all disease? Our self-consciousness in a not good way. Being, being and again, I, I feel like modern day, we've turned the word you know, self-conscious and self-aware into like good positive things because most of the time we're walking around not being self-aware. So the fact that you are self-aware is a good thing. So I wanna, I wanna make a, a, a disclaimer. That's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is before you do something, you know, thinking, oh, do I want to do this? Do I not want to do this? Is this my type of thing? Is it not my type of thing? Is this, you know, making sure that you're absolutely comfortable in every single part of your life actually in a certain sense holds you back from your infinite potential. So dream big, let go of your, your, your negative stories, let go of your negative, you know, limitations. We spoke about this in the two previous my mom as well, but Letting go of that self-consciousness in a negative sense can give us this infinite potential of, of, of removing that illness. And by removing that illness, we're able to connect to something even greater than ourselves. We're able to connect to our true and essential mission. And that's one of the reasons I, I was like, yesterday when, when Racheli was speaking about this, I was like, yes, I want everybody to walk away with this concept that sometimes you have to dream bigger than what you think you're capable of. And even if you don't accomplish it, even if you don't get there by the time frame you had in mind, or even if you don't get there, period, the process of moving out of that, you know, constricted mindset changes you as a person. It puts you in a different mentality. So thinking of something that you're, you can go above and beyond what you think is ca you're capable of, just even thinking about it and even trying to work towards it will take you steps in that direction, even if you don't reach the full marathon, even if you don't finish the full, you know, hike up the mountain. That's amazing. At least you took steps that were beyond what you thought you were capable of. So having this level of connecting to the greatest potential of you, connecting to what you really think Hashem brought you into, into this world to do, even if it's bigger than what you think you're capable of. I didn't think I was going to open up living chassidus and it was going to be what it is now. I just thought it was a little sheer to help some people learn some chassidus and connect to something greater. And Baruch Hashem, I'm glad I, dream, I dreamt and I pushed and I'm constantly dreaming and I'm pushing. And one day you will also wake up and say, wow, just because I dreamt and I pushed myself, look at what I've done. And it doesn't have to look like Levech it doesn't have to look like a Chabadas. It could look like whatever your dream is meant to be and whatever your particular Shlichas is meant to be. But again, it's letting go of this constricted mindset of this is what I can do and this is what I can't do. And thinking beyond and connecting to your essence of Ash, your godly part, because that part is the part that comes down and breaks all boundaries in the sense of gets rid of this, this illness. Okay, Mitzvah tomorrow we're going to have a for bringing about the mimer. I am shocked that we finished, but like Baruch Hashem, we did it. So huge, huge Mazel Tov and Kol Kavot to everybody for joining every morning and even if you missed it for watching the video. And um, can't wait to see you guys tomorrow. Happy and amazing like Baimer.